Good morning all. This is the part 3 of the short story An Angel in Disguise. What is to be done with the children? That was the chief question now. Now no one knew what to do with the children. That was the chief question. Chief meaning main question, major question. The dead mother would go underground and be forever beyond all care or concern for the villagers. But the children must not be left to starve. <clears throat> so the mother passed away. So nobody has to be concerned about her anymore. But the children, there are three children. They should not be left out to starve. Starve means suffer due to hunger. After considering the matter, and talking it over with his wife, Farmer Johns said he would take John and do well by him. Now that his mother was out of the way. So what did Farmer Johns decided to do? He decided to adopt John. Why? Because earlier it was mentioned that John could be very much helpful in a farm. So that is what Farmer John's thought. So he adopted John and Mrs. Ellis, who had been looking out for a bound girl, concluded that it would be charitable in her to make choice of Katie, even though she was too young to be of much use for several years. Another woman, Mrs. Ellis, she decided she would adopt Kate because she was in search of a bound girl. Bound girl is someone who helps at her house, who helps to do the uh, jobs, the chores at her house, but without any payment. They would stay at home, they would get food and they would get shelter, but they wouldn't get any payment. That is what a bound girl is called. So Mrs. Ellis is saying, even though she could get a much better bound girl. She is doing a favor for Katie because she doesn't have anyone. And Mrs. Ellis would actually have to wait several years for Kate to grow up, to be mature and ready enough to be a bound girl. But nevertheless, Mrs. Ellis is adopting Kate. I could do much better, I know, said Mrs. Ellis. But as no one seems inclined. Inclined means interested. So as no one is interested to take her, I must act from a sense of duty. Comma. There must be a comma out there. Okay. Expect to have trouble with the child. For she is an undisciplined thing. Used to having her own way. So Mrs. Ellis is saying, I know she will be undisciplined. She will be troublemaking because she was not taught manners properly by her mother because her mother was an alcoholic. So Mrs. Ellis is saying, I know she would be troubled but I am adopting her anyway because that would be a charitable uh, action from my part. But no one said, I will take Maggie. Pitying glances were cast on her, wan and wasted form and thoughts were troubled on her account. But no one said they are ready to take Maggie, they are ready to adopt Maggie because she is a disabled child. There would be no use with Maggie and she would be a burden to whoever uh, she is being adopted to. And everyone was looking at her with pity, sympathy, but no one was ready to adopt her. Uh, van and wasted form means disabled form. And thoughts were troubled on her account. Uh, and they were having troubled thoughts on her account, on her regard, on her sake, about her. But what did uh, what did they do? No one was ready to adopt them, but they did do some favors for her. Mothers brought cast off garments and, removing her soiled and dragged clothes, dressed her in clean attire. So what did the mothers of the neighborhood do? They brought some cast off. Cast off means unwanted garments. Garments means dress. So they brought some 
unwanted uh, clothes and they removed uh, maggie's soiled soiled means spoiled is p o i l e d and ragged ragged means torn clothes torn t o r n torn clothes and they dressed her in clean attire attire meaning clothes the sad eyes and patient face of the little one touched many hearts and even knocked at them for entrance but none appeared to take her in who wanted a bedridden child so everyone was feeling sympathetic towards her and maggie was begging with her eyes to everyone to adopt her but no one was ready to adopt her because she would turn out to be a burden for everyone take her to the poor house <clears throat> said a rough man of whom the question what is to be done with maggie was asked nobody is going to be bothered with her so a rough man a man who is not soft who is not having a tender heart a soft heart said let's put her in an orphanage to a poor house because nobody would want her no one no one is ready to adopt her the poor house is a sad place for a sick and helpless child answered one so someone said poor house is not a good place for someone uh, who is sick and helpless like maggie for your child or mine said the other lightly speaking but for this brat it will prove a blessing change blessed change and this rough man is saying Uh, for your child or mine it would be a bad place but for this brat brat means child look at the spelling of this t h i it is not t h i s it is t i s it is like that it is like uh, it is given here like that that is uh, a spoken form okay it is not the correct form of using that word it is used like that to show how people are talking it is they are using this slang a late a colloquial slang okay even in our mother tongue we have similar things like that right uh, we might not be saying something in the way it is supposed to be written right so this man is saying since maggie doesn't have anyone it would be a blessing for her because she will be kept clean she will have healthy food she will be doctored she will be having doctors take to check her health which is more than can be said of a past condition so he is saying it is much better than what she had her whole life till now there was reason in that but still didn't satisfy what he said made logic but still it was not a satisfactory answer for everyone day following the day of the death was made the day of burial so the next day of maggie's mother's death was was her funeral a few neighbors were at the miserable hovel hovel means hut but none followed dead cart as it bore the unhonored remains to its proper grave so some of the neighbor came for the funeral to the hut but no one uh, went to the grave proper grave proper grave means poor proper means poor the grave for the poor none followed the dead cart which bore which was bearing the remains of maggie's mother which was unhonored because she didn't live an honorable life farmer johns after the coffin was taken out placed john in his wagon and drove away so what did father john sorry farmer johns did uh, he after the coffin coffin means the box used to put the dead body after uh, the funeral farmer johns took away john in his wagon satisfied that he had done his part so he was feeling satisfied because he felt that he did his part in this whole matter mrs ellis spoke to kate in a hurried air here the meaning air means manner so in a hurried manner like there is not time to waste mrs ellis spoke to kate bid your sister goodbye so she wasn't even giving enough time to kate 
to say goodbye to Maggie and drew the tearful children apart ere scarcely their lips had touched in a sobbing farewell ere means before before they kissed each other goodbye it is a common culture in america to uh, greet people by kissing okay or greet people or say goodbye and kate and maggie didn't even get the opportunity to do that properly because mrs ellis was in a hurry hastily fastly others went out some glancing at maggie and some resolutely refraining from a look until all had gone so um, everyone le- left fastly and someone's glance some people were glancing at maggie they were looking very cutely at maggie glance means to look cutely or fastly because they were not able to look her for a long time because if she looked at them if she looked back with them they wouldn't be able to uh, what deal with deal with her because they were feeling guilty for not taking her and so everyone left she was alone just beyond the threshold joe thompson l will write post and said to the blacksmith's wife who was hastening off with the rest it's a cruel thing to leave her so so then joe thompson the will right came the and he told to the wife of the blacksmith blacksmith is the one who deals with metals so he told her it's a cruel thing to leave maggie maggie behind then take her to the poor house she'll have to go there and said the blacksmith's wife springing away and leaving joe behind springing means moving fastly so then blacksmith's wife said if you are so concerned about her then you take her to the poor house then she will have someone there for a little while the man stood with a puzzled air puzzled means confused so he stood there confused about what to do with maggie then he turned back and went into the hovel again maggie with painful effort had raised herself to an upright position and was sitting on the bed straining her eyes upon the door out of which she, all had just departed a vague terror had come into her thin white face vague means unclear so joe went back into the hut and maggie was in an upright position in a very strainful manner very painful manner she has to you she has to use a lot, lot of energy and effort to sit like that because she is disabled and she has this unclear confusion terror because she doesn't know everything about her future is very vague very unclear oh mr thompson she cried out catching her suspended breath don't leave me here all alone so at the instant at the second she saw mr thompson uh, she begged begged to him to not not to leave her alone though rough in exterior joe thompson the wheel right had a heart and it was very tender in some places he liked children and was pleased to have them come by to his shop so even though mr joe uh, is a person who is looking rough physically he has this tender has he has this kind soft heart and he also liked children and when these children came to his shop where sleds and wagons were made or mended mended means repaired for the village lads without a draft draft means plan or delay on their hoarded six expenses so he liked children so much that he would make sleds sleds are uh, kind of like a board which is used to slide down over snow so he used to make sleds and wagons wagons it's, it's like a small way small cart with four wheels used for kids and he used to make them and repair them just for six pence six pence is a very cheap amount he wouldn't get any profit from doing that but since he loved children 
he would accept the hoarded hoarded means their saved money their pocket money he would make all these things for the children without any draft Trans draft means delay or plan he would make make it for them very quickly no dear he answered in a kind voice going to the bed and stooping down over the over the child you shall not be left here alone and he said no i will not leave you here alone by stooping over to her stooping means bending so he bent down to her and said he is going to take her then he wrapped wrapped means covered her then he covered wrapped her the gent with the gentleness almost of a woman in a clean black bed clothes which some neighbor had brought and almost like all almost like uh, in a motherly way he took her in a blanket in a sheet and lifting her in his strong arms bore her out into the air and across the field that lay between the hovel and his home then he picked her up and he started walking with her through the field that is between this hut and jo's house now <clears throat> jo thompson's wife who happened to be childless was not a woman of saintly temper so jo's wife she was childless she did, she didn't have children and she was having short temper she didn't have the temper of a saint temper means a person's mind in terms of anger and calm so she didn't have a saintly mentality or mind instead she had a very short temper so she would get angry very quickly nor much given to self denial for others good so she considered she never considered uh, selfless love self denial means self refusing refusing oneself which means loving someone selflessly so she never considered loving others self uh, doing something others selflessly for others good and jo had well grounded doubts touching the manner of greeting he would receive on his arrival so he had well grounded strong doubts touching touching means about so he had strong doubts about how uh, jo's wife greet jane would greet them after they arrived at the house mrs thompson saw him approaching from the window and with ruffling feathers ruffling feathers is a phrase it means upset mood have you seen when birds like hen gets upset uh, their feathers would rise up so just like that uh, it is just a phrase okay so with ruffling feathers with upset mood met him a few paces few paces means few distance from the door as he opened the garden gate and came in so she was very upset she went to the main door and waited for him while uh, jo opened the gate of towards their home he bore a precious burden and he felt it to be so so uh, for jo maggie uh, maggie felt as if she is something precious as his arms held the sick child to his breast her breast means chest a spear of tenderness went out from her and penetrated his feelings a bond had already corded corded means bound it's itself around them both and love was springing into life so both maggie and jo were already bonding they already started loving each other so love was blooming into into life so it was already happening